Today I'll be showing you inside my closet where I keep my scrappy fabric stash. In these larger baskets, I keep fabrics separated according to color. And in these smaller baskets on the top shelf is where I keep my strips that I've cut into various sizes. The strip sizes that I cut are one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, five and seven inches. And I keep my scrappy squares inside my aqua cupboard and each container has different size squares. Now these squares are cut from the strips from the small baskets in my closet or from leftovers like when I'm doing easy corner triangles. In today's tutorial, we're going to be using two and a half inch squares. So this is what the inside of my two and a half inch strips baskets look like. They're the two that are on the left here. I pretty much try to keep them organized by color. And that way, for example, if I am just looking for greens, I know that all the greens are in this stack and I don't have to go through everything. Now cutting two and a half inch squares from this basket is super easy. They're already two and a half inches tall. All I need to do is take my two and a half inch square ruler and go ahead and sub cut. When my bin for two and a half inch squares gets low, then I go ahead and just take a few minutes and cut off some squares of these strips and put in the bin. This way I have an endless amount of two and a half inch scrappy squares and I love it. I really enjoy sewing for my stash and I've made so many beautiful scrappy quilts this way. Now in this other bin, I keep my background strips that are two and a half inch and my two and a half inch squares, but we won't be needing that today. What we'll be using today from these prints are just two and a half inch squares. I also wanted to show you inside my baskets of five inch wide strips. Now I keep these strips separated by color as well. And because they're five inches tall, you can easily cut two and a half inch strips by cutting two at a time. Okay, let me show you the block that we'll be making. Let's get started. This is my Scrappy Crossroads block here on the design board. I've been teaching this block for many years in my Scrappy workshops. I've done tutorials on my blog several times and even on Instagram. And today I want to show you how to make it on my new YouTube channel. It's one of my very favorite go-to Scrappy Happy blocks. Okay, let's talk about the squares. I take squares from my bin and put them in a smaller container to keep by my machine so that I can sew them together in between projects or all at once, whatever time I have. And when this smaller container gets empty, I just refill it. Now I always have a 10 inch design board by my machine that I keep my projects on. For this block, I need four patches that end up measuring four and a half inches square. For the four patches, I do press my seams open, but you could press yours to one side or the other, it doesn't matter. Remember, you're the boss of your own quilt, so you can do it your favorite way. Now you'll also need to choose a solid fabric for your blocks and for your quilt. You'll need to cut them four and a half inches square, and on each square, you're going to be sewing an easy corner triangle using the two and a half inch squares on opposite corners. Now I've made this quilt so many times that I've used so many different solids, and they're all beautiful. For this quilt, I've chose to use Riley Blake's Natural Linen. It's got a really beautiful weave, and I really love piecing with it. It's not too thick and it's not too thin. Okay, so now for each scrappy crossroads block, you're going to need eight four patches and eight of the four and a half inch squares with the easy corner triangles. When cutting your solid fabric, you can get eight four and a half inch squares out of one width of fabric. So an eighth of a yard makes one block. My scrappy crossroads block is made up of four segments. All four segments are the same. They're just turned so that you have the design going in a diamond shape. See how the linen forms a diamond here? That's what you want in your block. So I begin by just sewing two two and a half inch squares together. And of course I use an accurate quarter inch seam allowance. 
I like to chain piece mine so that I'm not wasting thread. I like to press my seams open and I use my roller here to roll it first and then I just take it over to the ironing board and give it a quick press. By the way, under my ironing board here is where I keep my scrappy projects while they're in progress. Okay, so I just continue making two patches and then I go ahead and sew two of them together so that they become a four patch. So let's chat for a minute about pinning. Sometimes I don't pin at all, but other times if I have seams that I'm worried that may not line up, then I'll use my double pins. I love these because they're thin and you can just pin them and they go on each side of the seam so there's no room for slipping. You can sew over them and it's not a problem. When I use the double pins, my seams line up perfectly every time. I really like to press my seams open because I feel like the blocks lie flatter and therefore they're more accurate. I use my roller on a hard surface, just give it a quick roll and then I give it a quick press and this really makes a difference in my blocks. Okay, now we've made the four patches. Let's go on to making the easy corner triangles. You need one four and a half inch square of solid, or in this case, linen, and carefully line up those edges evenly on the bottom corner. You're going to be stitching from corner to corner of the two and a half inch square. You'll need to mark your line with a pencil or use a seam so easy guide like I do, and you can just sew from corner to corner by following that center line on the guide. All you need to do is line up your corner on that line and it works every time. So first I add one square and then I go around to the opposite corner and add the other square. I like to clothesline stitch these as well, not only to save thread but also to save time. Okay, so when you've got two squares sewn on each side of the solid or the linen, then you can go ahead and trim with some larger scissors and just use an approximate quarter inch seam allowance. It doesn't really matter at this point, they're already sewn on. Now as far as pressing goes for these, I actually do not press these open. I like to just take them and press towards the triangle. I just make sure that it's open all of the way so I don't have any folded seams in there. Sometimes I will press my easy corner triangles open, but for this block I just don't really think it's necessary. I think it goes together with the four patch perfectly and they still lie flat. Okay, so let's go ahead and lay out a segment on one of my small design boards. I need two of these and I need two of the four patches. This is the direction that you want to lay them in. So when I'm laying these segments out on my design board, I try to pick sections that don't have the same color of fabric touching. Um, so I'll just kind of go through and audition different pieces until I like what I see. Then before I sew these four pieces together, I make sure that my background is running in the same direction. And that's why it really helps to use a design board. I've used them for years and I just can't sew without them. Now again, here you can choose to pin or not to pin. Now I clothesline these segments together as well, but when I run out of segments, I just go ahead and sew a couple more squares together. I'm always sewing squares or rectangles together in between my clothesline sewing. I do this with every project that I'm making, and then I end up making them into either a table runner or a quilt, or sometimes even just a pillow. I call these projects my bonus quilts or bonus projects, and I've made so many over the years, and it's really a lot of fun and I always use my stash. Now today I'm showing you how to sew my Scrappy Crossroads block, but this video is only first in a series that I'm calling the Sew Your Stash series. Throughout the series, I'm going to be filming even more blocks that I like to make using my Scrappy Stash. For some of them, I'll continue to use the two and a half and five inch strip baskets, or I'll move on to my three and a half by seven, and even my one and a half. 
I'll be talking more about my scrappy stash during the series, how I shop for fabric, how I cut it up into strips, and why I cut it into strips, and why I store my fabric this way. I'll also be talking about how I cut up the leftovers from each project, what size I cut them into to add to my baskets. Okay, so while we were chatting, I got one segment completed, and I'm so happy that all the points matched up. I also press these seams open, and I make sure that when I'm rolling that I go over where the seams match up. And then just a quick press with the iron finishes it up perfectly. Okay, so here we have one segment complete, and you just need three more for a block, four segments. On the large design board here, I have four laid out, and all I need to do is sew them together, and I press those seams open as well. So I placed these over on my design wall, and I wanted you to see what the blocks look like when you put them together. These are not sewn together yet, but this is what they'll look like. Look how they form that secondary pattern of an X with the linen. I really love how it looks. My scrappy crossroads block finishes at 16 inches and each segment should measure eight and a half inches unfinished. I'll show you my quilt when it's all quilted. I'll chat with you next time.